What's up, everyone? We're back. Dr. Maxfield. Dr. Shaw, and welcome back to our channel, Dr. Lee, where we talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, we have a timely video related to lip care. Dry lips. So it's fall, it's winter. I think everyone's experiencing this a little bit more. We'll talk about what causes dry lips. Can you be addicted to chapstick? What ingredients to use and avoid? Lip masks and also product recommendations. So everything related to dry lips, here we go. Here we go. All right, so first let's talk about what causes dry lips. So the lips don't have as much of a barrier as the rest of our skin. And so you lose a lot of moisture from your lips to the environment. That's the first and probably the most significant factor. So your lips don't have that top layer of the skin that the rest of your skin has. And so it's naturally just not as good at holding in moisture. And then you compound that with low humidity in the winter. You compound that with a lot of wind that dries out your lips and causes more evaporative loss. And it just makes it way worse. And that's why in the winter time, your lips are just a total nightmare. So a lot of people will tell you that your lips are dry because you don't have oil glands on the lips. And that's just not true. We definitely have oil glands on the lips. When we look at lips underneath the microscope and we're doing surgeries for skin cancers, we see that the lips have specialized oil glands that are not associated with the hair follicle the, like the rest of your oil glands. And we call those fordyce spots or fordyce glands. And they drain directly onto the lips. And so you definitely have oil glands on the lips. It's just that your skin can't lock in those oils as effectively as the rest of your face, which is why we see the very extreme form of this when you start Accutane and you shrink your oil glands that your lips get extremely dry right away and almost 100% of people that start Accutane will experience dry lips as their number one side effect and that's because there are oil glands in the lips. Right, so since we don't lock in this moisture that effectively, then we're using something like chapstick to help, help prevent that. But with chapstick, there's always this question, like can you become addicted to chapstick? Yeah, so you, you're you not really gonna be addicted necessarily to the ingredients within your chapstick, but what can happen is that you get addicted to sort of the habit of applying chapstick or the sensory feeling of having chapstick on your lips or maybe the flavor of the chapstick. There's no really addictive ingredient that's gonna change your dopamine receptors, but you may form a habit of applying chapstick continuously, though you're not necessarily quote unquote addicted to the ingredients. Yeah, it's not like an addicting drug that like signals straight to your brain and you're like hooked, but I have a different take. I think it's a unique take. Actually, I'm pretty sure it's a novel idea. This never actually holds to be true. Our lips are different than the rest of our skin, just tremendously different. And our lips are actually different than our lips. So the lip out here is very different from that shiny wet lip here. It looks different under the microscope as well. And I know from doing surgery on the lip, we move the inside of the lip to become a new outside of the lip for some repairs. I know that the lip undergoes tremendous change when it's exposed to the environment. You actually, unlike the rest of your skin, you can actually form a whole new layer on the top layer of your lip and start to develop that stratum corneum. Um, this is a form of metaplasia. And so if you are using chapstick, and we might need to use it, but if you're using chapstick consistently all the time, your lips may not have like that defense mechanism in place to be able to buffer against that dry environment. So I think that's partly responsible for what people experience with chapstick addiction. Um, our lips do readily adjust thereafter once you stop the chapstick, but I think that contributes. So I guess what he's saying is that you can become reliant that on the chapstick, like you're, you're almost could develop a physical reliance on chapstick because your body now adapts to being protected all the time. It's almost like if you were to weight lift and you're, you know, you're at the gym and then you notice you develop calluses, that's your body's way of developing a defense mechanism against constant stress. And so you develop calluses in areas of pressure. And so in a way, uh, your lips are an adaptation to your natural environment. And by using a uh, chapstick, you could potentially become reliant, but you may need the chapstick. So there's really <laughs> exactly. nothing that you can do uh, to stop that. Totally agree. You do need chapstick and you do need some of these moisturizing ingredients to help you. So on one end, your lips are just not really well equipped to lock in moisture. And then on the other end, you may be doing things that are making it worse. So your lip balm could be the potential cause of your lip balm addiction. So 
Um, you may be developing an irritant or allergic contact dermatitis to your lip balm. And what ends up happening is that causes inflammation, irritation, and dries out your lips. And then you feel like you need to apply more. And so you apply more and more in response to the allergen that's actually in your lip balm. So the most common allergen in this one study, I think is based out of Singapore, uh, basically showed that castor oil or ricinus communists or communism or <laughs> ricinus communists, castor oil was one of the most common allergens in your lip balm products. Um, so another thing to look for is fragrances, cinnamates, propolis or beeswax, all, all things that can potentially cause irritation of the lips, allergy to the lips, which would make you want to apply your lip balm more. In addition to ingredients that can make it worse, I think there's actually also some procedures, uh, not even procedures, like I'm talking about things that remove skin from your lips, like exfoliation. I have the stance that your lips don't need to be exfoliated because when you exfoliate your skin, one of the things you're trying to do is remove that dead layer of skin cells on top called the stratum corneum. Your lips either have an extremely thin to no stratum corneum whatsoever. And so what you're exfoliating ends up being that like healthy top layer of mucosal skin that's already trying to survive. And I feel like this irritation actually just makes it worse. This can be in the form of your alpha hydroxy acids. This can be in the form of like mechanically peeling off your lips. And this can even come in the form of something that's usually pretty mild and that's that gentle sugar scrub. Now this is a twofold problem because that sugary scrub can just traumatically remove the peeling lips, but it's also delicious. Then you develop something called lip blickers dermatitis, which is a whole nother problem, right? So if your lips get dry or you have something tasty on your lips, who knows? Makes you wanna lip your, lick your lips more. And that saliva actually irritates the lips more. It has some enzymes in it that can irritate the lips. And you also get more evaporative loss. And by having more evaporative loss, you dry out your skin even further. And so you get something called lip liquor's dermatitis. And so sugar sugar scrubs may be the worst idea. The worst, I guess. You heard it, the worst. All right, so before we talk about specific product recommendations, I wanna talk about these lip masks. This is definitely part of that treat yourself part of a skincare routine. So certainly not necessary. Um, and I've done some reviews on shorts that you can check them out on the different lip masks that are out there. But I think the two main competitors in that space has to be the Laneige one and the one from Tatcha. Absolutely. Um, so I'm like half tempted to do the rest of this video with the Laneige lip sleeping mask. I mean, go ahead. All right, why not? Let's do it. Uh, so this comes with like a little spoon. I've lost it because it's a little spoon. <laughs> All right. Now, do you notice a difference? I notice a difference. It's a little bit much. So a little bit glossy. I would argue though, and that was my complaint with them as well, but you are using them at night though. So it's not like. Right. But then you're like, well, why is it colored? Because you're using it at night. <laughs> Another like unnecessary valid, ingredient. Valid. Smells good. But it smells, smells good. good. Well, you know, I'm not, I, I don't think they're really necessary. They're a little bit pricey. They tend to have fragrances in them. They can be a little bit irritating, but then again, they have, you know, lipids like shea butter that can be moisturizing as well. So it, the Laneige one, I like better than the Tatcha one when I compared them head to head with each other. But again, I don't think they're necessary. If I was going to choose one, I'd actually choose Laneige. I would too. And I, I almost, okay. So I hate the fact that they have fragrance in them and I'm not like that strong of an anti-fragrance person, but this is a leave on, on a sensitive area where the fragrance is absolutely unnecessary because you're asleep. You can't even enjoy the fragrance. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's just completely unnecessary. Unless you're not sleeping alone. Totally lost my train of thought. But what I do like about them, and I actually like the concept of a lip mask in general, is this is like eight hours, uh, okay, not really, like six hours, where you have the opportunity to intensely hydrate your lips. Like, I think it's a missed opportunity if you don't. So one hack that you could do is that you could actually double moisturize. Double moisturizing is back. So you can do that to your lips, right? So what you can end up doing is you could take your humectant, your hyaluronic acid, your other moisturizing, maybe just your regular bland moisturizing cream, and then lock it in with the lip mask or lock it in with one of our other favorite lip treatments. So you could double moisturize the lips, especially if you have really dry lips and that could intensely hydrate overnight. So that would be your own homemade lip mask and it's probably gonna be even better. But treat your lips like you treat your skin. That's what I say is like you add humectant and moisturizing ingredients and then lock it in. Hey, it rhymes. Um, so treat your lips like you treat your skin, humectants and moisturize and then lock it in. Pretty good, but would you use a retinoid on the lip? No. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, so on to our product recommendations. This is actually gonna be pretty simple, straightforward, and pretty cost effective. What I like um, is sort of your petrolatum based. Let me see what I got here. In my pocket. Boom, CeraVe healing ointment. It's got a lot of moisturizing ingredients, got petrolatum to lock it all in. It's a skin protectant, phenomenal. You can't buy this. These are samples that we get at our office to give patients to try out. Um, I wish they did sell it like this and I've spoken with them directly about that. It's still not out yet. So I still highly recommend that they do that. Um, but CeraVe healing ointment, Aquaphor, Vaseline, big fans of those, especially if you lock in a moisturizer underneath those. Those are really my go-to for the most part. One that I tried recently because I was in New York City and I was out of my lip balm. Um, I walked into Sephora and in Times Square and I, I bought the um, Drunk Elephant lip balm, or I think it's called like F-bomb, okay? Uh, I think that's what it's actually called. But it's, good. it's pretty good. You know, it's got good ingredients in it. It's not as hydrating in my opinion as even the CeraVe healing ointment, but a good, if you like something that's a little bit less petrolatum based, then I would go with that one. See, that's interesting to me because I actually, I like this a lot. I've used it for a long time. I don't find it as occlusive as wax esters for some reason. So you'll notice I like, I like products with beeswax. Now that has some inherent risk with allergies and things like that. But if you're not allergic, I like wax esters. Now look, you can look at those luscious, glossy lips. Moisture is locked in, sealed. So you like the one from Burt's Bees as long as you're not allergic. Yeah, I do actually like the, the Burt's Bees line. They do have an unscented, and unscented is always like a little suspicious, but even unscented one that I like okay. It has castor oil in it, which can be allergenic as well, but I, I do like that too. Yeah, so it's all about like, you may have one that you really like that is not causing you problems. Like if you're not allergic to castor oil, you're not allergic to fragrance, um, then you don't have to worry about what we said earlier. But if you do, if you're noticing like, I feel like I always have to apply it and my lips are always irritated, then maybe look at your lip balm and say, oh, this has castor oil. Let me shift to one of the ones that doesn't have the castor oil. So we really talk about allergens and irritants as a way to arm yourself against potential irritation, but also if you're experiencing irritation, looking at your products and saying, maybe this is what's causing the problem. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's it for dry lips. That's it for dry lips. Thank you all so much for tuning in. We really appreciate all of you and we'll see you in the next video. Yep, please like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time. <laughs> see you next time.